Hello, my name is Nicole Carson Bonilla and I'm a portrait photographer. I recently designed and made my own modern white apple boxes. It's an idea I've had for a while and I finally got around to making them. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how you can make your own. And as a bonus, at the end of this video, I'll show you some photo shoots and edited portraits using the boxes. And I use them for some personal branding portraits for myself. But before we go any further, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And if you find this video helpful, please consider a super thanks. It's the button below this video of a heart with a dollar sign inside of it. Your small contribution goes a long way to helping me keep making free videos that I can share with you. My boxes are a little different than traditional Apple boxes in a couple of ways. First of all, they're not enclosed on all six sides. They have an open side, which is easy to face away from the camera in portraits. This also makes them lighter weight and functional as storage in my studio, and I can use them to carry things on location. I only cut a handhold on one side so I could keep the opposite end solid. This creates a smooth modern look in my portraits while also having an easy way to move them around. As my disclaimer, I do not pretend to be a professional carpenter, and I'm sure there are far more detailed and accurate ways to make these apple boxes. But if you'd like to have some cool boxes that are simple, affordable, and don't require a lot of specialized tools, then keep watching. I decided to use birch plywood for the boxes. I went to my local hardware store and found sheets of half inch thick, two by four foot pieces for about $35 each. I bought three of them. To secure the boxes, I bought a box of 100 wood screws. Since the wood is only half inch thick, I didn't want the screws to be too large and break through the wood. I bought a bottle of wood glue to help secure the wood pieces together in addition to the screws. I also bought a small tub of wood filler to fill in the holes on top of the screws. My final items were a small paint tray and some six inch rollers meant for smooth surfaces. For white paint, I used a can of paint I already had from several previous projects. It is a basic eggshell finish white primer. To add a protective finish to the boxes, I selected Minwax Polycrylic in a matte finish. I did not want the boxes to be shiny. And I conveniently included links to all of these products in the description below. I started by measuring some boxes I already had to determine the ideal size for my new boxes. I was thrilled to discover I could cut all five pieces from one two by four foot board with very little waste. Here's a diagram you can pause on and take a screenshot if you like. I had access to a wood shop with a table saw I could use for cutting the boards. I began by marking the cut line for my biggest panels. Then on the table saw, I was careful to position the board so that the blade would cut on the outside of my trim line. Once adjusted, I set the guide in place and cut through the boards. Since four of the boards all have the same height, I cut them all at the same time while the saw guide was set. I continued to mark and cut the boards, doing my best to maintain even pressure as I ran them through the saw. Once all five pieces for all three boxes were cut, I lightly sanded all the edges to remove any large splinters. Now it was time to assemble the boxes. I live in Gilbert, Arizona, which is just outside Phoenix, and it was a very warm day. We're talking like 105 plus. I would have preferred to assemble these in my garage or backyard, but I chose my air-conditioned great room instead. I spread out a bed sheet and some large pieces of cardboard on my kitchen table to work on top of. I placed the top piece of the box flat on my table and used it as a guide to place the four side panels. First, I ran a small bead of wood glue along all the side edges of the panels. I used a plastic spoon to go back and smooth out the glue. Once I placed the small end and the two sides, I used a clamp to hold them in place. I didn't have to squeeze it very tight. A little bit of wood glue oozed out from the pressure of the clamp, so I quickly wiped it off with a paper towel. Then I repeated these steps for the opposite side of the box. I applied glue to the sides of the end panel and secured it with a second clamp. To prepare holes for the screws, I used a countersink bit on my drill. Then I eyeballed the center of the side panels and drilled a hole as straight as I could. After drilling into the wood, I had to reverse the drill to get the bit out of the wood. Here's a diagram showing where I drilled the holes that you can pause on if needed. To set the screws, I simply placed the screws in the holes and went around with my drill. I countersinked the screws just below the top of the wood. Once all four sides were attached, I ran a bead of wood glue all the way around the top of the walls. Then I carefully lined up the top panel. I slid the box slightly off the edge of the table so I could attach two clamps to hold it in place. Then I used my countersink drill to drill all my holes at once. Then I placed screws in all the holes and went around and screwed them all in place. 
Although I measured and cut the boards as carefully as I could, I still had a few edges that just barely overlapped. So I used a belt sander to gently smooth out a few of the edges. I also ran one of the boxes through the table saw again to barely trim off some overhang. Then with a hand sander and sanding paper, I did some fine sanding to finish them off. I was not expecting perfection, but wanted to at least make them as smooth as I could. To fill in the holes above the countersunk screws, I used a plastic knife to apply some of the wood filler. It is pink when it is wet and then dries a light brown color to match the wood. To make the hand hold in one end of each box, I started by measuring the center of the radial ends of the cutout. Here is a diagram showing my measurements. Then I attached a circle cutting bit to my drill and proceeded to drill out two holes. Once the holes were cut, I used a ruler to mark straight lines across the top and bottom edges of the circles. Then using a skill saw, I cut along both lines to make the handhold opening. Then I took some sandpaper to smooth out the edge to remove any possible splinters. I repeated these steps for all three boxes. Now that the wood filler was dry, as indicated by the tan color, I sanded down the excess filler to be flush with the box. To prepare the boxes for painting, I wiped them down with a damp rag to remove all the dust from sanding. To paint the boxes, I used a can of interior primer paint I already had from a previous project. It is a basic white with a matte finish. I used a 6 inch roller meant for smooth surfaces and a small paint tray. Painting the boxes was pretty simple. I went all around all five surfaces. Even though it probably would never show, I also painted the slim edge on the bottom of the boxes. I went ahead and applied three coats of paint. I was going for a modern look for these boxes and did not want any distressing on the edges and corners. The downside to flat paint is that it shows scuffs very easily, which is why I purchased the polycrylic to provide a clear protective finish. I first applied a small amount to test the finish on the painted box. I could see a slight difference, but thought it looked great. Using a wide brush, I simply painted on the polycrylic to all five sides of the boxes. It went on very easily and I ended up applying two coats. I had to be careful not to apply too much polycrylic along the box edges to avoid any drip marks. I have had so much fun using these boxes. Having three of them provides an endless variety of configurations. For these family portraits, I was able to stack the boxes vertically. This allowed the baby and toddler to sit on top of them, which provided a closer visual composition with their parents. And laying the box on its side was a perfect height for the toddler and baby to sit on. For these senior portraits, I arranged the boxes and then covered them with the black fabric. It was awesome being able to easily adjust them to fit the stature of my model. I had the special opportunity to photograph Ukrainian champion ballroom dancers Ina and Artem as part of the Reach Humanity fundraiser to benefit refugees. I used the boxes as a platform for Artem to sit on for these portraits of hope. I added the Ukrainian coat of arms or trident in Photoshop. Then it was my turn to use the white boxes for a personal branding photo shoot. I enjoyed moving them around to create a variety of casual and interesting sitting poses. Honestly, these white on white portraits were what I had visualized and was super excited to create long before I even made the boxes. I love using high key backlight on a white set with my model also dressed in white. These boxes created the modern clean look I was hoping for. It is so exciting to have an idea in your head come to life and even exceed your expectations. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and feel inspired and empowered to make your own. Now, of course, there are some fantastic Apple boxes that you can purchase online. But if you enjoyed the hands-on experience of making them yourself, I highly encourage you to give it a try. And if you like this video, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And also, if you found this video useful, please consider giving a super thanks. It's the button below this video of a heart with a dollar sign inside of it. Just a small contribution or tip from you can go a long way to helping me keep making free videos that I can share with you. Thank you so much in advance.